Hey guys, so I wanted to just come on this evening to show you um, our eggs that we're incubating. Joe does a couple batches of eggs every few months or so. Um, sometimes, you know, five, six months will pass in between, but we regularly hatch our own chicken eggs. And these are for layer hens. Um, we have free ranging chickens, and so, you know, they sometimes get picked off by predators and they die or they just die of natural causes. We actually do really, really well for the most part. In fact, this last year has been really good. We haven't had very many issues with chickens dying. Um, I just had one the other day that I found in the coop that was dead and she was just kind of curled up in a ball and she, she had died um, probably within a few hours, a couple hours of me finding her because she wasn't, uh, she wasn't stiff yet and she was still kind of warm. So. Um, but you know, we want to keep our, our flock up because we eat lots of chicken eggs and we have a lot of friends and neighbors that we sell eggs to and share our eggs with. So, you know, we got to keep those numbers up and make sure that we've got enough of the hens around to give us what we need. So we occasionally, um, but on a regular basis, incubate batches of eggs and we, they, we have a pretty good hatch rate. Um, and most of them are usually always fertile. Uh, we've got three roosters right now, and um, they do a pretty good job of keeping all the eggs fertile. So we have had a few that aren't, and you know you can tell with the flashlight when you check the egg to see if it's fertilized or not, um, and if there's a, a chick inside that's forming or not. So you can usually tell if it's fertilized and then get rid of the egg that's not fertilized. Um, no sense in keeping it inside the incubator if it's never gonna hatch. So anyway we just did a batch of um, chicken eggs a couple weeks ago and they already hatched and we've moved them outside to our little chick house that we like to call it it's kind of our temporary chick house until they have grown all of their feathers and can go into the bigger coop without the heat light so we have kind of a good little system going on um, we've, we incubate them once they hatch we keep them in the house for about a week week and a half in a big tupperware under the heat lamp and then we move them out to the little chicken house for a couple weeks and then we move them into the chicken coop so it works out great um, I'm excited about these ones because we have right now we have four Easter egg layers um, and to be honest I don't even know if that's the right name for those chickens I need to look it up I keep saying I'm gonna do that and I haven't done it um, but you know they lay the blue eggs so people call them Easter eggers Easter egg layers um, and we have in here let me show you guys I think right now we have five or seven, I can't remember how many Joe put in here, um, of the blue eggs that are incubating nicely and Joe keeps all of this stuff under control, makes sure that the temperature is right, the humidity is right, um, and he has a really good hatch rate. In fact, a couple times I've told him, okay, stop. <laughs> stop incubating eggs, we don't need any more chickens. So. Um, we just collect them and put them in here and 21 days later um, you've got new chicks so it's a pretty pretty easy process we put a sticky note on here um, when we put new eggs in with the date and the time that we put them in the incubator and then also when they should hatch so we can kind of keep an eye on them and once the once the chicks hatch we leave them in the incubator for one to two days the chicks don't need food and water for the first few days of life. That's why they can be shipped around the country from hatcheries for a couple days and they're okay. Um, they've gotten all the nutrients and everything that they need from you know, inside the egg that they can survive for a couple to a few days after they hatch without anything. So, so that we don't sub, you know, disturb the humidity and the temperature and everything too much for the eggs that haven't hatched yet, we don't 
take the chicks out right away. We leave them in for a day or two. Um, because we don't always put the eggs in at the same time. You know, we'll collect maybe a handful one day and put them in and then collect another handful the next day and put them in. So we kind of have like, you know, a trickling effect. We'll have some chicks born one day and some chicks born the next day. Um, but I'm just really proud of Joe. I got him this incubator from Tractor Supply. I think it was last year for Christmas and it's pretty cool. It has this self-rotating rack so he doesn't have to rotate the eggs. He literally doesn't have to do anything but just keep Keep an eye on the humidity and the temperature um, and I'll see him come in here every once in a while and squirt a little water with the spray bottle to adjust the humidity level and stuff like that so he's he's gotten pretty darn good at it but anyway I just wanted to show you guys these little babies and today is February 7th and these ones are due to hatch February 15th so I will keep you guys posted and once these little babies start hatching I will make sure to videotape it hey guys. So we've had our first little chicky hatch. If you can see her, assuming it's a her. <laughs> I think she was born, or I'm sorry, I think she hatched early in the morning. Um, so can, there she goes. Like three, four o'clock in the morning because I started hearing chirping. She's nice and warm. The other ones haven't hatched yet. Um, they should be hatching any time now. Welcome to the farm, little mama. Yeah, welcome to the farm. As far as nutrients, she's perfectly fine to stay in the incubator for a day or two. They're born with enough nutrients to last for two to three days without any water or food, so she'll stay in here until the other eggs have hatched and then we'll start removing them. We don't want to disturb the temperature and the humidity level of the other, you know, of the incubator because then it could affect the other eggs hatching. Reflections in the glass. Mm -hmm. so Which one's hatching right now? This one? That one under the black one? Oh, oh yeah, that one right there. <laughs> oh, look, he is jelly. They're like, come on out. Look at them. They're so exhausted when they hatch. <laughs> he says, I'm so tired. Took all my energy to get out of that egg. <laughs> this one's still trying to come out. Every few seconds, he'll peck a little bit at that egg. See that beak? Look at that. Yeah. Hey, honey. Come on, hi. What are you doing? Hey, Joe. <clears throat> I think you do need to get these big ones out because now she's trying to peck on this open egg. Well, she just did. <laughs> she pecked some of the egg off of it for it. But Parker, one's getting ready to hatch. This blue one right here. See the shell? Yeah, open shell. Uh-huh. Is that cool? Yeah. Yeah, do you like hatching eggs? What's your favorite part? And the babies. The babies? <laughs>
Dad's gotten pretty good at hatching, huh? Yeah. See it? She's trying to come out. Oh, yeah. Look at me. Hmm? Our ghetto chicken factory. Yeah, our ghetto chicken factory. Joe's rigging up the heat lamp. Because we've got to take these little babies that have already hatched out of the incubator. The older ones, because they're starting to kind of trample over the, the newborns. And for now, probably a day or so, we're going to put them in this little tub because they're not strong enough yet to go in here with the meat chicks. Meat chicks are good and strong. And fat. And fat. <laughs> so we have the fat meat chicks, right? What do we do with the meat chicks? Eat them. Hmm? Eat all the meat. Eat all the meat? Is it yummy meat? Yeah? Biscuits and gravy. With um sausage. And see which one of pig. We try to be super quick with this process so that we don't affect the temperature and humidity as much as we can in the incubator. The rest of these can hatch in peace. <laughs> Hopefully they hatch. We've got a pretty good success rate with them, but we do we do have some that don't hatch out of each each batch that we do. She's like, oh yeah. Guys trying to stay warm. <laughs>
she out? Oh, there she goes. Oh, look, hi. <laughs> hi, girl. Look at her. You did it. Oh, look at her little teeny head. They're born just chirping away, huh, Joe? <laughs> look, look, look. look, she says hi. Uh oh, not the eyeballs. Look at it. Oh, hey, little mama. Welcome to the farm. Oh, she works so hard. She's tired now. Oh, the light's still light. Oh, the light's still pee. Just sit it on the glass. Sit it on the glass because you're making it really hard to see your liver too much. Oh, look. Look at her cute little eyes. She's like, oh, I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi, little one. You're super cute. You're super cute. All right, guys, I'm getting ready to go outside and show you um, some of our other chicks that we've hatched that are, um, they, they've got their regular feathers have now grown in. So we've, you know, moved them out to the chicken coop and integrated them in there and they're doing great. Um, but I'm going to show you guys the Easter egg layers that just hatched that you got to watch. And they're about, um, they're about a week, week and a half old now and they are starting to grow their permanent feathers and they're adorable as ever. So we are gonna keep them inside uh, probably for another day or two and then we'll move them out to our little, um, our little chicken house with a heat lamp and they'll stay out there for a couple weeks until they're big enough to go into the chicken coop um, like the other ones that I'm gonna show you. So check these little babies out. Look how big they've gotten. They're doing great. Hi. You guys sure are pretty. See their feathers starting to come in. They lose all the fuzziness and then they get their feathers in and that's usually when we start to transition them outside. We still keep them under the heat lamp um, until they get all their feathers in. That way they can stay nice and warm. So these are seven chicks that we hatched here on the farm. And as you can see, they've got all their feathers. So we've transitioned them out here to the chicken coop into this kennel and we leave them in the kennel day and night for about two days just to let them <clears throat> get used to the the coop environment and all the other chickens <laughs> she's like excuse me um can i have a little privacy please but um so we just opened this kennel up yesterday and now they get to come in and out as they please and the other birds are used to them and they're used to the other birds so that's just how we do it and it seems to be a little system that works out just fine sometimes the bigger chickens will pick on them and uh, that's why we started transitioning them into the kennel first for a couple days so they can all get used to each other these sweet babies are actually not ones that we hatched these ones are from our broody, our broody chicken, and she hatched them for us, so that was pretty awesome. Oh, guys, you guys are so pretty. Yes, you are. We have about 40 laying hens right now, and three roosters. So we are 
we're good to go. But every once in a while, like I said, a predator will come and we'll lose a couple here or there. So every once in a while they die of natural causes. So we do incubate eggs when needed to kind of keep our flock up to the numbers that we want. But it's a very easy process. Put them in the incubator, 21 days later, you've got baby chicks. And then these little guys here will start laying for us in about five to six months. 